Now at six on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45, looking for insight why Greensboro police are still investigating a double homicide and how they want the public's help. Also, confession in a shooting that left one dead. What authorities are saying about the incident. And school safety, a look at security procedures and protocols used at community colleges across the state. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. We will have those stories coming right up first here at 6 o'clock. Meteorologist Terry Bennett is here with the first check of your weather on the ones forecast. And I've had to keep that umbrella close just in case all day, Terry. <laughs> well, it's going to become a permanent fixture of your wardrobe the next couple of days because we've had some showers move through the area this evening and there is more on the way overnight, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday into the weekend. I'm afraid it is just an unsettled pattern for sure in and around Greensboro. We've We've already had one batch of some showers move through the area. Right now, things are relatively quiet in and around Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point, too. Temperatures did make it into the lower 70s today, and at the top of the hour, we are still looking at 70, 73 in Greensboro, 74 in Winston-Salem. That umbrella going to be a much-needed utensil here the next couple of days. We'll talk about when the rain may finally come to an end. Up with your full weather in a few minutes, Sharon. It's been nearly two months since the remains of Asia Brown and her two-year-old son were found in a burned-out car in an industrial part of Greensboro. Police now have more questions than answers about what happened to Brown and her son Ashton. Our Kristen Drummond joins us live from Greensboro with more on how investigators are hoping people may be able to help. Kristen. Well, Sharon, Greensboro police held a news conference this afternoon and offered insight into the investigation, hoping to trigger someone's memory. They say Asia Brown was last seen at this AutoZone here behind me on Randleman Road on February 20th. They say she came here to buy supplies for a 2005 black Buick LaCrosse, which she just bought and registered at a High Point DMV a few hours earlier. After that, all police know is she didn't show up to work over the weekend and a co-worker reported her missing on Sunday. The next day on February 23rd, city workers found a burned car with two bodies inside an undeveloped area off Industrial Avenue. Police recovered Brown's license plate and believe the remains are of Brown and her son, Ashton, even though the medical examiner's office hasn't confirmed their identities yet. Now, police say they followed up on persons of interest, but still no leads yet. At this time, we do not have a solid suspect in this case at all, so we're looking for help with that. But yes, we certainly have, have interviewed hundreds for this case so far, probably. Now, police encourage anyone with information to call Crime Stoppers. All tips are anonymous, and it could lead to a cash reward. Reporting in Greensboro, Kristen Drummond, Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Investigators made an arrest in the 1989 murder of Vicki Cook Von Cannon. This afternoon, the Guilford County Sheriff's Department announced they arrested 58-year-old William Parker. Police say in May of 1989, Von Cannon was reported missing by her husband. Her body was found several hours later in High Point City Lake Park by a ranger. Parker was a suspect in the original investigation but was never arrested. He is charged with second-degree murder and is currently serving a life sentence without parole as a violent, habitual felon. Authorities continue gathering evidence in a fatal shooting on the campus of Wayne Community College. The man accused of pulling the trigger made his first court appearance in Florida today. Kenneth Stansel III argued the victim, Ron Lane, molested a relative of his. Stansel is currently being held without bond, and officials are working to have him extradited to North Carolina to face an open murder charge. Our Dennis Viviano is in Goldsboro with a look at this investigation. Kenneth Morgan Stansel III, who had a knife on him, was arrested without incident in Daytona Beach, Florida, around 1.30 a.m. Tuesday morning. Volusia County Police found him on the beach sleeping, which is a violation of the city ordinance. Police say Stancil left Wayne Community College Monday on a motorcycle, but later abandoned that motorcycle along Interstate 95 in Lumberton and then hitchhiked down to Daytona Beach, Florida. Sergeant Jeremy Sutton with the Goldsboro Police Department says several agencies were on Stancil's track. 
Monday's fatal campus shooting is being investigated as a possible hate crime, but investigators would not elaborate any further on the matter. Police say they continue to search social media and the suspect's home for a possible motive and additional evidence. We served search warrants yesterday and collected uh, a lot of evidence. And right now our uh, evidence techs are going through that evidence as we speak. Investigators say Stancil entered the print shop at Wayne Community College just after 8 a.m. and killed 44-year-old Ron Lane with a pistol grip pump shotgun. All crimes Stancil later confessed to Tuesday to Volusia Law Enforcement. Lane dismissed Stancil from the print shop's work-study program in February because he had too many absences. Police have not released a motive in the shooting and said that the men's relationship was purely a supervisor-student one. Police say Stancil does not have a prior criminal record. Goldsboro police say they expect Stancil to be back in town to face charges this weekend. We reached out to the Stancil family earlier for this story, but they gave us no comment. In Goldsboro, Dennis Baviano, Time Warner Cable News. And a moment of silence was held today for Ron Lane. Students and staff started leaving items for a makeshift memorial at Plunk Clock on campus this morning as they returned to class one day after the shooting. Authorities say they are happy to have Lane's suspected killer in custody. I was very happy this morning when I got the text from one of our officers that he had been captured. It was a very it was a relief. There's a renewed focus on security on campuses following that deadly shooting. Chris Williams examines security at community colleges to see if all is being done to protect students. Concerns and questions over security at community colleges continue to grow. Well, it does raise like ideas in my mind of, you know, am I safe? Could it happen here? Um, is there surveillance? You know, campuses are reviewing safety procedures and protocols after the deadly shooting at Wayne Community College. In Durham, Chris Williams, Tom Warner Cable News. Durham Tech officials say they have a security first response task force that meets once a quarter. Officials plan on talking about the Wayne College shooting at their next meeting. Designs are complete and the city of Greensboro is ready for the next phase of the more than $20 million Horse Pen Creek road widening project. Greensboro is currently in the process of right of way acquisition, working to purchase about 140 properties. As part of that process, the city purchased three chunks of property for almost $150,000 earlier this month. The overall goal is to widen the road from two to four lanes from New Garden to Battleground Avenue, add bike lanes, a median and sidewalks. Over the last 10, 15 years, there's been a lot of growth in housing, uh, recreation centers, schools in the area, and so we've seen traffic increase as well. Um, and looking at our forecasts uh, for the coming years, we expect that's going to continue. The project is being funded through the 2008 transportation bond referendum. The DOT hopes to start construction next year and wrap up by late 2018, maybe early 2019. Members of the state NAACP met with lawmakers today to talk about bills in the upcoming legislative session. They want measures on expanding Medicaid, raising the minimum wage, restoring voting rights, and funding public education. NAACP President William Barber says they will make their voices heard if these bills aren't passed. If there is not movement on these bills that protect the lives of people, the health of people, the rights of people, the voting rights of people, yes, there will be a fresh season of civil disobedience. The group also talked about plans for upcoming Moral Monday protests. President Barack Obama is going to be in Charlotte tomorrow. He's scheduled to host a town hall meeting. The White House says the president will speak with working mothers about the challenges they face. And our Washington Bureau reporter, Jeff Bennett, has more. President Obama's trip to Charlotte is part of a larger White House effort aimed at building support for tax proposals, which the Obama administration says will help working families. The president is scheduled to host a town hall meeting for working women at the Educational Arts Center Imagine On. The event is closed to the public, but Time Warner Cable News will have live coverage of the president's arrival and town hall meeting. And just one indication of how politically important North Carolina is, this will be President Obama's second trip to Charlotte in as many years. He was last in town in August for the American Legion Convention. 
Reporting from the White House, Jeff Bennett, Time Warner Cable News. President Obama is removing Cuba from a list of state sponsors of terrorism. The White House tweeted that the president has submitted to Congress required reports and certifications indicating his intent to take Cuba off the list. It's a key step in his bid to normalize relations between the two countries. He announced that the U.S. and Cuba were ending hostilities back in December. It only took three months for North Carolina Senator Richard Burr to raise more than a million dollars for his 2016 re-election bid. He raised that money from January to March 31st of this year. Burr is seeking his third Senate term against opponents yet to be named. No Democrats or Republicans have surfaced to challenge him. Another member of Duke's national championship team is entering the NBA draft. Mike Salarte has your sports next. And a group of new firefighters will be on the streets soon in the Port City. That's in our Carolina Minute. The second member of Duke's freshman class has decided to take his talents to the next level. Justice Winslow will head to the NBA draft this coming summer. In a release from Duke University, head coach Mike Krzyzewski says of Winslow, quote, from everything we have found out, Justice is projected to be a high lottery pick. We believe that to be true. This is a great time to take advantage of this opportunity, end quote. We'll have more on the Justice Winslow decision coming up at 11 o'clock. I'm Mike Salarte, and that's sports at 6. And Terry's back after the break with your forecast. And we're starting off with a live picture from Winston-Salem Tower Cam this evening. You can see that the skies appear to have brightened in a few spots. It's been dry, generally speaking, late this afternoon over much of the Forsyth County region. Some rain has been moving through the Guilford County and Greensboro area, but now radar picture is relatively quiet. It is a warm, muggy evening out there. 74 degrees in Winston-Salem. Dew point temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. An indication that there is a lot of moisture in the air, and there's a front that's going to move through the area overnight, so we're hanging on to additional showers, some of which could produce some briefly heavy downpours. And there's more rain for Sunday, Monday. It might be Tuesday before we see a fully sunny day, so it's an unsettled pattern, one we're keeping a close eye on for you. And we'll have more for you coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. Sharon. All right, thank you. Oh, profits rise for the nation's largest bank. Let's get the latest on the economy now from our team on Wall Street. I'm Diane King Hall from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. A mixed finish for stocks as investors processed a mixed bag of earnings and economic data. By the close, the Dow rose 59 points, the Nasdaq lost 10, the S&P 500 gained 3. On the earnings front, J.P. Morgan Chase rolled out its quarterly report card. The nation's biggest bank says profit rose double digits to $5.91 billion. That was better than expected. From the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. About 50 paratroopers who participated in Monday night's airborne operation on Fort Bragg were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Among those injuries were lower extremity issues and back pain. A majority of the troopers were back to normal duties by the end of the day. More than 2,100 servicemen from the U.S. and Britain participated. Nearly two dozen new firefighters will soon be putting out fires in Wilmington. 19 recruits graduated and will spend the next few months as probationary firefighters. This week, they are refining their skills by practicing rapid intervention techniques and repelling from a fire tower. Several baby ducks are now safe thanks to some quick thinking employees at a Valentine business park. The employees called the Carolina Waterfowl Rescue Team after they heard cries coming from a nearby storm drain rescue team will take care of the ducks until they're ready to be released near a pond. Tonight on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45, all hands on deck for workers at High Point's International Home Furnishing Center coming up at 11, a preview of this year's spring market that starts this weekend. Quickly on the way out, if you love ice cream, today is your day. Ben & Jerry's is celebrating free cone day. If you visit any Ben & Jerry's store before 8, you get a free cone. World News Tonight with David Muir is next.